everybody, I'm Kid Catholic. This is Season 4, Episode 21, and today we are going to be talking about does the church make mistakes and the people within the church. So, let's get into it. So, the simple answer to does the church make mistakes is no. The church does not make mistakes. The church is guided by the Holy Spirit, and we see clear proof of that with this. We have been here for 2,000 years. We are the longest lasting Christian denomination out of all of them, right? We've been here for 2,000 years, and we still have yet to have a teaching that contradicts itself. With all of these popes, with all of these teachings, with all of our doctrine and dogma, you would think we would contradict ourselves in some way, but we do not, which is clear proof that the Holy Spirit is guiding us in everything we teach. However, it is the people within the church that make mistakes. Priests make mistakes, right? Even the Pope himself makes mistakes. Peter, our first ever Pope, denied Jesus three times. We read that very clearly. And so the church itself does not make a mistake, but the priests and the Pope and the bishops and some of the nuns and a lot of people within the church make mistakes. And I feel like a lot of people in nowadays world try to pin a single priest or a single nun or a single person within the Catholic Church mistake on the entire Catholic Church, right? So sometimes we get ridiculed because so-and-so, a certain specific person in the church sinned and did something that was wrong and that he shouldn't have, and they pin it against the entire church. And I feel like we really need to try our best to try to get others to see the logic of it. If someone within their church does something that is against their church and goes away from their church, then it's not the church's fault, right? We all sin, but sometimes those sins can be really big and can pin others against the church in general. And the evil one likes it. The evil one is encouraging it, right? He likes that we make one of our priests or one of our nuns makes one single mistake and everybody's out to get us, right? Satan likes that. And so we need to try our best to defend our faith. Another good example of people trying to pin something against the entire church is oh, some people in their own parishes get upset if a certain priest comes in and changes something or does something wrong or maybe they catch the priest sinning maybe uh, the priest tells a lie or really not only the priest but anybody for the matter and they want to leave the parish and sometimes it can be so bad that they want to leave the church entirely right and if we have a friend who has done that or who wants to do that or if you yourself uh, as an adult want to do that yourself then you need to understand or your friend needs to understand that one little sin by a person within the church does not come back on the whole church we must defend our faith to the best of our abilities we cannot let us get ridiculed however like I talked about uh, the week before last week we cannot be do it in a rude way right I'm not gonna get that much into it because I just talked about two topics ago but we cannot defend our faith in a rude way right we have to do it in a kind and loving way and we can't just think we know everything we don't want to teach someone something about the Catholic faith if we don't have any knowledge of it right we might end up being wrong and what we teach might contradict the Catholic Church teaching because what you teach taught wasn't right right so we need to try our best to the best of our abilities to know what we are defending and if maybe we don't know what we are defending and we ourselves have the question of why do you do this or uh, why why do you teach this then we ourselves need to research it and we should also try our best to honor those in office to honor our priests and bishops because they have apostolic succession you can trace it down from the time of the apostles the apostles ordain more and then they ordain more you can trace it out all the way and you will lead right to our current priests and bishops so even though they do make mistakes they really have apostolic succession and the catholic church is the one true faith instituted by christ it is founded by jesus Christ. So even though sometimes the people within the church do make mistakes, we need to know that it's still founded by Jesus, and so we need to honor those in office. So even though we know that these people can make mistakes, we need to honor them. We need to honor the office. We need to honor who God has called to 
become in that vocation. The nuns, the sisters, the priests, we need to honor them to the best of our abilities. Again, real quick, I want to emphasize that the church does not make mistakes. The church itself has not made a mistake because we are guided by the Holy Spirit, but the people within the church make mistakes. So remember that, and remember to honor those. Uh, honor those in the office. Honor the priests. Honor your bishops. Even though they do make mistakes, they are trying their best and they are doing what God has called them to do and they are fulfilling their vocation which is awesome to see. We also need to remember to defend our faith in as kind of a way as possible and to also try to learn more knowledge about our faith so that whenever we get attacked by it, which happens a lot nowadays in the 21st century, I feel like now more than ever uh, we are getting ridiculed for our faith by others around us, especially uh, with the internet. Sometimes uh, the internet can be used for hateful things. Like I've gotten uh, hateful comments and ridiculed for my faith, and I'm sure uh, you might have too. And so we need to know to defend our faith as kindly as possible. So now that the topic is done, do you guys know what it's time for now? It's time for the Saint of the Week. Back at the Heavenly Hammock, and today's Saint of the Week is Saint John Paul II. Now, there is a lot to Saint John Paul II, and I want to highlight some of the major and awesome parts in his story. He was born in 1920 in Poland, and when he was only 19 years old, the Nazis started to reign terror on Poland, okay? They started to uh, destroy cities, dis destroy people, uh, and so he was very brave. He joined an underground seminary because Nazis were especially against Catholics as well. So he was brave enough to join an underground seminary hiding from the Nazis and became a priest. JP2 made history in 1978 by becoming the first non-Italian pope in the past 400 years. He also did something really cool. I did do a topic about Vatican II and JP2 was actually a member of the Second Vatican Council, Vatican II, which is really awesome to think about. He is such an incredible saint. Uh, also, one time, this is another big part of his story that I just awe at every time uh, I read it, every time I hear about it. I think that it is so cool. Okay, so when he was a uh, pope, he, someone tried to assassinate him, okay? Someone tried to kill him, and that can be very scary, but he recovered, okay? He was okay. He did not die, and he forgave the person. How hard does that sound to be able to forgive someone who tried to do that to you? I know it'd be very hard for me and you know it'd be very hard for you, but JP2 was able to do it. And I think any time we might be angry at someone and we really don't want to forgive because forgiving, in my opinion, is one of the hardest things to do, especially when someone has been done very wrong to you. Even though it is the right thing to do, it can be very hard, but the Bible teaches us to forgive. And any time we are afraid to forgive or we don't want to forgive because it can be hard we need to look to JP2 remember what he did remember how he forgave and uh, try to imitate him so thank you guys so much for watching please like the video please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it that way you know that way you get notified when I come out with a new video also don't forget to check out all three of my social medias Facebook Twitter Instagram the link to all three of those will be in the description and in the comments below also don't forget to check out my website kid-catholic.com and if you go to kid-catholic.com slash shop you can order your very own awesome looking kid catholic t-shirt right now also don't forget to comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have and uh i will look i'll just set this part up that you might have that was kid catholic season 4 episode 21 i'll see you guys next week and hi brielle <laughs>